Hello and welcome to the F1 Feeder Series podcast, your guide to keeping up to date on everything in the junior single-seater world. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and for me, it seems like yesterday we were talking about Formula Regional Asia and the European pre-season, yet a lot of championships are coming to a close. Formula 3 is heading to its finale, and Formula 2's championship is more or less won. So, to ease the pain, today I have two drivers who still have a good few races left to run, and who know a thing or two about running alongside F2 and even racing in F3. Firstly, let me introduce a Danish driver whose stock has grown exponentially over 2022, especially since some impressive cameo drives in Formula 3. He's leading the Euro Formula Championship by some margin and nearly made the podium in Spa's F3 feature race. Great to have you with us, Oli Goethe. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, I'm Oliver Goethe. I'm driving in Euro Formula and I'm excited to be on this podcast. You're not just driving, though. You're dominating in Euro Formula, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. The amount of races you've won has been very impressive. But next up, I have one of just five drivers who can say that they've won a race in W Series after racing the championship since day one. She's also taken the podium in every season, but don't bring up the time penalty in Miami this year. Well, we won't mention that. Welcome to the podcast, Marta Garcia. How are you today? Hello, thank you. Thanks for having me here. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks. Um, and yeah, just happy to be here. And let's see if we can have a small chat. Yeah, looking forward to it, Marta. Lots to talk about. And somebody, when I've got lots to talk about, who can talk a lot, and I'm always glad to have him here, coming back to the podcast, as Formula 2 looks to be crowning a new champion. And, well, Tyler... It's a season over. Is Formula 2 done? You were watching the races over the weekend. Welcome back to the podcast. Yes, yeah, nice to be back. Um, I mean, it's never over, even when the when the season's done. You know, there's always stuff to talk about when it comes to drivers for next season and everything. So there's always places left. And the team's championship is actually quite exciting. So um, you know, even though Felipe looks like he's got that wrapped up, there's still a lot to go. So, yeah, exciting. Very exciting. And that's a, a good thing to bring up as well. Team's championship has been excellent this year. As ever, a quick reminder to like, comment and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, where you can also find some of our previous episodes and some short videos of our best bits on the rest of the channel. And if you're listening to the audio-only version, please leave a review on whatever podcast platform you're using. I know I say it every week, but leaving a review and a rating is so helpful, and we keep gaining new ratings every week. Thank you so much for everybody who takes the time to do it. You can leave a rating on Spotify and review us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to everyone who rates and reviews us. It really does help us out. Okay, so I'm going to start with Formula 3 this week. Uh, I know who we have on the podcast, and they're not racing currently in Formula 3, but there are a lot of questions for both of you, so don't worry. We'll go in depth on your championship soon. However, F3 was in action in the Dutch dunes of Zandvoort, and someone here is now very familiar with the Dallara Mechachrome F3 car and engine combination. Ollie, you watched Zayn Maloney win last weekend in Spa, and he's done a feature race double. It's taken a few rounds, but he's kind of finding his feet now, a bit too late for a championship push, possibly. One, how tough is that car to drive? And two, how impressed have you been with the boy from Barbados? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's done a phenomenal job in the past few rounds. Um, I think he showed pace throughout the whole year. And, you know, now the results are coming. But no, he's, he's done really well. Especially, I know what it feels like uh, after, after a crash to... Uh, to mentally step up and be able to win the feature race the next day. I mean, yeah, that was quite impressive, to say the least. Yeah, you, you raced against him last year as well, I think, right? Yeah. And was I know he did well in the championship, but taking the victories as he's done this year in his rookie season, do you think if there's another couple of rounds, he might be a championship in the championship fight? Yeah, if there was a couple more rounds, I think anyone in the top top seven, top eight can still be in the can still be in the championship fight. It's it's such a tight championship. Um but obviously there's only one more round left. So I mean he can still get a really he's still gonna get a really good result, but 
yeah, it's a bit too soon too. Not not too bad for a rookie though, is it? Not too bad at no. all. Um, Marta as well, you've raced alongside Formula 3 in 2022. It's been one of the tightest championships this year. As Ollie mentioned, uh, there's one round to go and I did the maths and I think seven drivers could still win the championship. Do you have any particular drivers from Formula 3 you've been very impressed with? You've been sharing the circuits and some of the paddock with them this year? To be fair, um, <clears throat> I, I don't, I'm not really following F3. I, I, I watch F1, but this year I've been like not following F3 or F2 much. I know like F2, Felipe Drugo, which is like doing amazing. I've heard. Because <laughs> I'm following him on Instagram. But to be fair, I don't really, I haven't really seen F3. I saw some of the races when I was there, like um, Campos racing, because I trained with them in the, in the, in Valencia. So I saw like some of the races um, and I did well in some of them. Like David, I think he won in Barcelona or he did a podium, but to be fair, I cannot really tell you because I have not been watching a lot the races um, from F3 this year. But if you say there's like seven people to be able to win the championship, that, that's that's a lot of people. Like, how come? You've missed such a good championship. It'll be good just to watch I mean, those highlights. Watch yeah. Again. Well, Formula One YouTube channel's done so well this this year, just getting all these seven minute highlights. It's well worth yeah. watching. And a certain uh, a certain other guest on the podcast might make a, an appearance or two doing very well. But speaking about that, there was another new driver taking a Campos car this weekend, Tyler, a familiar name for F1 fans who saw a Montoya, but the Sebastian variety, who jumped over from Frecker, scored points in both races. Not a bad way to make an introduction. Well, we've seen that a few times. I mean, you know, Ollie's done it himself. And I think there's something else to talk about. We had a Montoya, a Schumacher and a Trulli all <laughs> racing the same weekend, which, you know, we haven't seen since the early 2000s in F1. Uh, I know that, that's the, the new Schumacher and truly aren't as good, I don't think, as, as Montoya. But, you know, Montoya's had a, a, a not a, a great season in Euro Formula. I saw him in, um, in Freck in the, oh, sorry, Frack, I should say, the Formula Regional Asian Championship at the beginning of this year. And he was up there with Arthur Leclerc, Jack Crawford. You know, he was he was looking very strong. And I'm sort of disappointed with how he's been in Euro Formula this year. But Freck, I mean, <laughs> sorry, Freck, sorry, my bad. Yeah. But the fact that he's, the fact that he's come into F3 and, you know, he's made an immediate impact. Yes, it's Zambor, and I know it's a difficult track to overtake at, but you know he had the pace to fight with um, guys like Jack Crawford. And I think that shows that maybe I'm disappointed that he actually just wasn't in F3 from the start. And I think you can say that about you know the man who hopefully is just here in the box next to me. Um, you know, There's a few drivers this year that have made a, a sort of a substitute appearance that have actually been really good. And I think that, again, just illustrates that there are so many drivers in F3 this year that are just... You know, so strong that you know eventually there's going to be have to be a few that are going to miss the mark. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll see Montoya again very uh, very soon in, in F3. We're going to whiz through the championships here, and we have to touch on Formula Two briefly, even though there's no Formula Two presence necessarily. Tyler, we've spoken chapter and verse about Felipe Drogovic all through the year. I think we can save our applause for one more week when he's likely to take the crown after after Monza but what other stories did you enjoy from Zandvoort this weekend there was Dutch pride with Novelak taking a podium from MP's Motorsport on Saturday Vashore's P2 on Sunday more silverware for the Dutch Liam Lawson's chaotic restart causing undeserved DNFs and a third race ban for an F2 driver Roy Nassani picking up more penalty points and becomes a third driver this year which I think is a record getting Mm. a race ban only a few things to talk about yeah well, i think what we'll focus on is is something that uh, i saw on twitter from a few people who were just talking about formula two as a whole this year and it's that the actual quality has been not as strong as it has been over the last few years and i think that it's an interesting point to raise um we had had a lot of rookies this year that have joined from formula three last year and we, if we look at the championship you see that sergeant Duan, Iwasa. Uh, Fittipaldi, I know, raced halfway a uh, half uh, of the season last year, but um, this is the first full season in, in F2. And, you know, a lot of those guys have come in and straight away made an impact. And you look at the guys that have been in there for three years, Daruvala, Vips and, and, and Armstrong, and they're 
you know, far down. So it makes you wonder what's going on. You know, is is it just that those older guys are not as good as we thought they were, or is it these these rookies are actually you know really strong? And I don't think we'll be actually able to answer that until we see next year's drivers come through and compete with you know the guys that have done really well this year. Um, in terms of uh, the weekend, the championships hotting up in terms of the sort of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth positions. There's so many drivers in such a compact space in terms of points. From Sergeant in third, who's on 130 points, down to Fittipaldi in seventh, who's on 111. So, you know, just how in F3 we have a really tight battle for the championship. Not so as exciting in F2, but in still something to look out for with, you know, a couple of rounds remaining. And then in terms of the team's championship, as I mentioned earlier, MP Motorsport, uh, you know, who have Drogovic, who scored 233 of their 269 points, which is over 86%. They're leading the team's championship, which is ridiculous to think about, you know, when you have a driver who's been doing all, and I don't want to have a go at Novelak, but, you know, he's been doing all of the heavy lifting for MP Motorsport this year. And for them to be leading the team's championship is ridiculous. So uh, that would be an amazing um, achievement for them. They've never got close. I don't think they finished higher than fifth in the uh, F2 uh, championship since they joined. Uh, so this would be an amazing season for them if they can win both the drivers and the team's championships. But yeah, two rounds to go, still a decent amount to play for, but um uh, let's just say that I'm going to have my eye a bit more on the F3 than than usual. Yeah, it's been really, really good. Oli, Marta, I, well, I know Marta, you've not been keeping up to date on too much on it, but Formula 2 this year, you mentioned Drogovic, Marta, that has done so well. Are they deserving of seats in Formula 1? Because it looks like the grid might be filling up a little bit. Let's go with you first, Marta. Does Drogovic deserve, I don't know, maybe an Aston Martin seat or something? I think, um, I mean, I think this year he did great. Um, I used to race with him, like I know him and he's a really nice guy. Obviously that doesn't make him go to F1, just that he's a nice guy. Um, but I raced with him. I think he's good. Um, I saw him in FIA three. Um, he was not that good there, but as, as Taylor said, um, in F2 this year, like maybe they, there was more rookies, you know, so we couldn't really see maybe, um, because at the end of the day, Felipe raced F2 last year, I think. So he's like more veteran in the in the championship. Um, so yeah, we cannot really know exactly um, how is the the um, how is he. But I think he did amazing. Um, he still won. Like he he's winning from like long points, like a really seventy long points. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. So I think like yeah. So that I think that just really shows that. He would probably deserve a seat in F1. Um, I would be happy for him because I really like him and I think he's good and he could do a good job. Um, but yeah, that's another thing. Like we all know that it's really difficult to get a seat in F1. Um, but yeah, of course, I would like to see him in F1. I think he would be like the, the Brazilian guy in F1 right now because there's no Brazilian guys. Wait, um, it just doesn't seem right, does it? I've not had a Brazilian in Formula One. It's so that they need to have a Brazilian a Brazilian driver sometimes. Oli, just on your point as well, we've got Porsche who might not be getting the seat after Joe doing so well and it looked like he was dead cert at the start of the year. Drogovic is now in the conversation after not being in the conversation before. Red Bull junior team don't look like many drivers or anyone's deserving of a, of a step up. How have you taken Formula 2 this year? Um, yeah, obviously, Djokovic has been really good this year. And um, yeah, I think definitely if you win F2 by such a margin, um, I think anyone kind of deserves an opportunity or at least a chance to test in an F1 car. Um you could say it's his third year, but for me, even in his rookie year with MP, uh, he got some wins. And so I definitely think he's a great driver. And yeah, Porsche as well. I mean, he came second in FIF3 in his rookie year, and now he's second in F2. Um, he's also a really good driver, but maybe he'll do one more year in F2. And after that, who knows? I have a quick question for both of you as drivers, because there's been a, a big, or well, he said it himself actually a month ago, and it's sort of gone under the radar because and nowadays a lot of things that drivers say are not factual a few months later because of how things change so quickly. But Porsche said that he's not going to be returning to F2. Um, and he used the reason of funding as why he might not be able to return for next year. If he doesn't return, do you think that um, drivers are beginning to think of, 
um, taking a year out is as part of a contract so that they might get a chance with an F1 team the year after. Is this becoming a thing? Because we've seen it with Piastri. Ocon did it as well a few years back when you know when he left Racing Point. I just wondered, do you think that you know missing out on another year when he, you know, Porsche is considered to be one of the better drivers and you know championship contender, is that a good strategy? Do you think as a driver? I mean, I think with Piastri, it was just sort of there was there was no seat. I think everyone everyone would say that he deserved to go to F1 after being uh, winning F3 and F2 as a as a rookie. Um, but obviously there was no seat, so I think he had to he had to wait a year before getting into F1. Um, and obviously, if there's no more seats and um, there's they've got a a link to an F1 team. There's definitely possibilities. I mean, we've seen it with Piastri, so it's definitely possible with Porsche. Who knows? I I don't know much about the situation. So, can I just bring bring up then, Marta? You had a year out because of a certain global problem that everybody was affected by, but some racing did happen in that year. But you kind of limited to just doing the esports. How? Difficult was it getting back in a car one year later? So, I mean, um, yeah, as you said, like we had this COVID situation. So 2020, I didn't race. Um, and yeah, I did this esports, but obviously it's not the same. You did well, though. So kind of Thank applause. you. I was second, but it, it has to be real, the real thing. Um, so, yeah, um, actually, I think I didn't really feel like much difference. Like, let's say... Um, I think it was like a year that I was not driving a car, something like that. Um, and I remember I did the testing in um, Anglesey in 2021. Mm. And to be fair, I was like one of the fastest, like I was quite well. So I can tell you just by this that, yeah, I've been like one year without driving the car. But at the end of the day, I think um, as a driver, you know how to drive and it's not something you forget. So when you get... In the car, obviously, maybe you get like some laps to adapt again or like feel the car, like get the feeling. But after that, I think it, it's okay, it's, like totally fine. So we can stop saying it's just like riding a bike and say it's just like driving a Formula 3 level car. I will admit this, Ollie, we've skipped your formula on the podcast for the most part. So I apologize. But if we are going to talk about it, Who better to talk about it with than the championship leader? We often say consistency is key and you've won over half of the races. And I think when I was counting up earlier, you've only missed the podium three times. So that's championship worthy consistency if I've ever seen it. How has 2022 gone for you and how is getting another win this weekend? I mean, it's been going really well, as you said. (laughs) Uh, the results have been uh, phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, I feel like it's given me a real confidence boost this year. And I've learned a lot um, as a driver with Motor Park. They're such a good team. Uh, I, I feel like I've learned a lot and I've really grown as a driver compared to previous years. So, now it's been a really good year. And you took to Imola this last weekend. How was how was the weekend getting back into your what called normal car, but the car you've not been driving for a while? Yeah, um, obviously, like like Marta said, when you're not in a car for a bit of time, you don't forget how to drive it. It just takes a couple of laps to to get back into it. So there's two free practice in Euro Formula, and mm. I think. After one free practice, I was back in the back in the rhythm, and yeah, so it wasn't. It didn't take too long to to get back up. It did take too long in the race as well, getting that race one victory. And you've got three rounds still to go: Red Bull Ring, Monza, Catalonia. What yep. are you expecting from those apart from the championship? I presume, but I don't want to put words into your mouth. And what are you expecting for twenty twenty three? Yeah, so I mean, as you as you said, <laughs> I'm expecting hopefully to win the championship. I think if it continues going like this, uh, I don't see how it can go wrong. Uh, but I don't want to jinx it. So 
um yeah no so i just have to keep racking up points and uh I, i'm not thinking about it to be honest i'm just doing the best i can every race uh being careful obviously i don't want to have any dns which could possibly cost it so um yeah and then for 2023 um the goal is to do f3 for sure obviously the two rounds that i did as a replacement driver um were really good so i think that showed that i can i can fight towards the top end next season this might be a bit too personal, but you have now done those races. You've proven that you're a known quantity and not just a known quantity, you've done well. Does that help you with sponsorship saying, look, I have the ability to do it. Look at this Look at this highlight on YouTube from the Formula One channel. Does that help you get that seat secured? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, obviously leading Euro Formula, Euro Formula is not as a competitive championship as F3. Uh, there's quite a lot less cars, so um, I feel like doing what I did in F3 kind of cemented that I could mm. that I could be towards the top. So yeah, for sure it helps. And to get to get a seat for a good enough seat for next year, um, doing those two rounds well definitely definitely helps. Can I sorry? Can I just say quickly? I, it was really good to see you do well in Formula Three because a lot of people were saying that you, the quality in Euro Formula has, and also sorry for saying that Montoya was in Euro Formula earlier. Obviously, my Euro Formula wheel knowledge is poor, um, <laughs> but a lot of people have, have been saying that the quality in the recent years, you know, and and the sort of um, the smaller competitor, um, you know, there's, there's not as many drivers compared to say Freca, and people were saying that it's not as strong a series. But I think you've proved, you know, that. Um, it's a series still, you know, worth a lot. And to come in straight away and make such an impact, you know, I think that it would be such a shame not to see you in Formula 3 next year. So there are a lot of people rooting for you in that, in that regard. So yeah, it was good to see you pulling it Thank out. You. Shame, shame it wasn't a podium, but it was still yeah. good. It was really close. <laughs> Last lap. Next year. Uh, next year, then we'll get there. Yeah, next year. <laughs> Let's move on to W Series before we get into some of the audience questions. It feels like the summer break is over for some, and after being halfway through a triple header for me covering it, it feels like the summer break is long gone. But for W Series, there's still all of September before getting back to racing. Marta, how are you enjoying this two-month slowdown, and how have you enjoyed your season so far in W Series? Well, I think um, the wait is a bit too long now, I think. Um, I think one month is okay, but two months is a bit too much. Uh, but yeah, I think like today is 5th of September. We go to Singapore, I think, on the 26th. So yeah, not long to go. I think we have time to prepare more physically, mentally and everything and do some some sim sessions, which I find quite, quite good because we don't know the track from Singapore. Like I think none of us does. Um, but yet yeah, this year, I think um, my target was to like um, learn more, you know, and uh, I think I'm doing that. Um, I, I can see like an improvement, of course, like if we if we talk about last year, I was P12 in the championship um, and I was struggling quite a lot. Um, but yeah, this year is totally different. Um, I came fourth in the last two qualies, um, which is quite a... Uh, Quite an okay position, to be fair, having in mind last year. And uh, I was like quite near from the first. I was quite near to the pole position in Paul Ricard. Um, so, yeah, I think this year it's it's been much, much better. Like I'm improving much more as a racing driver. Like I'm starting to understand understand things that were quite easy to like, that are like really basic things from from like racing, um, but that I don't, I didn't really take that much um like I didn't really think how important were those things like car transfer and these kind of things. Um, Cause at the end of the day it's like, what do you really need to, to know to be able to, to be faster, at least for me. Um, so yeah, I can say that it's been quite okay now. Uh, we have three races to go, Singapore, um, Austin and Mexico. Uh, so yeah, I'm just hoping to get a podium at some of the races. I think I can do it. Uh, but yeah, obviously you never know. 
but yeah, I'm 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 more confident that I will, than I was. Um, and I know I can do I can do better. Yeah, W Series is a weird championship because there's only two podiums positions because one's reserved for a certain Jamie Chadwick. It always seems to be. But you mentioned there Singapore, Austin, Mexico City. You went to Kota last year, and I think you had a bit of a weekend to forget, but. You got a doubleheader finale in Mexico with the baseball stadium, which is a really cool place to have your finale. I know you meant to have it last year. Have you been to Singapore or Mexico City before? What are you expecting from these these new tracks? So I've I've not been in Singapore. Um, I actually I think Singapore is quite a difficult track. It's not an easy track to drive. I've done the simul- simulator and obviously like um, there are some points that you really need to have like. Um, in mind let's say like you you need to understand the track properly good before you go there because after when we go there is like a free practice of 30 minutes and then we go straight to quali um but yeah what you said about mexico i think mexico is is double hater um and it's gonna be amazing just the the ambient you know the 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 people like there's gonna be a lot of mexican of course i have a lot of mexican followers so it's pretty nice because they are like spanish um speakers um so yeah i'm really looking forward for that race as well and the track i've not i've not tried it yet in the simulator um but i know it a bit and i think like also like i don't i don't know the track so i will have to work uh being the sim quite a while and and yeah Well, that's enough questions from me because the F1 Feeder Series podcast is for you viewers and listeners. We're going to move on to the part of the podcast called Hashtag Ask F1FS. If this is your first time watching or listening, you can get involved by using the hashtag Ask F1FS on Twitter, joining our Discord and using the podcast questions channel, or simply commenting on our YouTube videos and asking whatever it is that's on your mind. As ever, we have a load of questions. So apologies if we don't read yours out, but we'll try and get through as many as possible. Now, the first question is for you, Marta, and it's from somebody with the Twitter account called Bent Viscal. And they have asked, after okay. having done some <laughs> com- comparative research in Barcelona, can you confirm that the nicest people in the European Le Mans paddock are in fact part of the Algarve <laughs> Pro Racing Squad. Can you confirm this, Marta? <laughs> oh God, uh, I, I I haven't seen I, I didn't see him to be fair. I, I didn't get to see Bent. Um, well, there's there's nice people in a lot of places. Um, I was with United uh, with the team. Um, I was there like they invited me, so it was really nice. But I also went over to to the team from Bent to try and see him, and I also saw Sofia and. Um, yeah, I also know a coach from there that I is really good friends with me. Uh, but yeah, this is funny event. So, is there a confirmation, or are you just gonna go with the the what would you call it the well, PR I, I friendly would, answer? I would just say like um, they are really nice, but <laughs> of course, um, I was with United, and I think um, obviously they invited me. So I, I'm just I'm just kidding with you, Marta. Bent, of course, is a uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Great to have him on the podcast. Great to see him asking some questions. So thanks for that question, Bent Fiscal, whoever that might be. Next question is through Ollie, and it's from a regular question asker called CM Parfait Sixteen, and they want to know. And can you put some backstory on this as well, please, Ollie, for those who don't know, like myself? Hi, Oliver. Of all the cars your father collected, which one is your most favorite and why? Uh, yeah, so my father has a, a golf car collection. Um, yeah, and my favorite one, I would say, is the McLaren uh, F1 GTR long tail. Ooh. Yeah, it's a really nice car. <laughs> um, also in with the golf livery um yeah no i i just really like how it looks and yeah the right, the, my... it's an iconic livery you well what how old are you and can you drive like on public roads and two yeah. does he let you drive them and would he uh i don't i don't know if you would trust me to be honest <laughs> and, uh, yeah i don't i don't have my racing uh i don't have my driver's license yet i'm still 17 so but in in a month i'm 18 so 
uh, so I'll, I'll get it soon. But I don't know if my, I don't think he'll trust me with it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start the hashtag, let Ollie drive or something like that. And get you, get you in it. That's excellent. Um, Tyler, I think you've got the next question. Yeah, next question is to both of you from the Twitter user ing zero underscore. Um, would you rather drive for a back market team in F1 without having the ability to progress? or be in a championship contending team in IndyCar, Super Formula, IMSA, or as an example. Um, Marta, do you want to go first on that? Yeah. So you, you said, like, if we would rather be in, like, an F1 team that is, like, last, let's say, but, like, not being able to, to progress as a driver, or, like, yeah, of course, but being there, uh, or whether do something different um, or being in a good project in another series or mm-hmm. indie or yeah yeah exactly well I think if you tell me like this if I don't have the if I had the opportunity to be able to be in this team in F1 and then and then be able to get to another team in years like some people mm-hmm. does then I would take that opportunity because I want to get in F1. Um, but of course, if if the case is that I should be driving in F1 forever, like in the in the worst team or whatever, like not being able to improve, um, I would probably go for like indie or another kind of category. I think there's more ways out. Like it's not just F1, of course, we already know. Um, so yeah, I would be happy to do like in the in the car. I think it's quite interesting. And um, yeah, of course, like as I said, there's a lot of more stuff, not just F1. So I think I would take like another way for sure. Oli? Yeah, I mean Marta just stole my answer there. I think <laughs> it would be the exact same. I obviously depends a bit on the situation if if the team if you're at that team and you're able in a few years to go to another team and then so on, then of course I would go to F1. Um, but yeah, if, if the question means like that really you can't change team, you can't improve as a driver and you'll just be last all the time, then I don't see the point in, in doing that. So I'll do something else. How do you view a series such as IndyCar in comparison to Formula One? Because obviously with a lot going on in silly season between the two and drivers, you know, people have been saying that Ricardo was an option of moving over to IndyCar. Obviously we've had, you know, a lot of few drivers, you know, talking about moving over from America. How do you view IndyCar um, as a series in comparison? Um, I don't watch IndyCar that much to be completely honest. Um, but I know that there's, obviously f1 drivers uh that have gone there uh like roman Grosjean, for example uh, and there's also a really high level in indigar and it, the races look really they're, they're definitely really entertaining um but yeah i mean for me f1 is still the the top top level and top the peak of motorsport to be honest don't worry, I can see you've been a bit nervous, Errol. You're on the F1 Feeder Series podcast, not the IndyCar Feeder Series podcast. So we we support that sort of answer. So although IndyCar is looking like such a viable option. Um, the next question is from Jed, the JGG01 on Twitter. You've answered the first part, which is, do you plan to move to F3 full-time next season, Ollie? Should there be a seat available? But this second part I'm more interested in, would the expectation and pressure be any different to how they were a few weeks ago if you do move to F3 next year? Um, Yeah, so I think there'll definitely be a bit more pressure. Um, Obviously, just coming in as a substitute, no one kind of expects anything. There's not so much pressure on. Uh, You're not in the championship as well, so that from that point there's definitely more pressure to to get good results especially after doing some good results as a substitute um now i'm i would be expected to be towards the top so there's definitely a bit more pressure but i mean that's that's racing every everyone's gonna have that so yeah would you expect yourself to to start strong next year if you did have a full turn seat yeah, I, I hope so. I don't see why I, I can't. 
why I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, obviously, anything can happen, so uh, it's not it's not a guarantee for anyone to be to be quick week in and out week out. But um, yeah, I I did it. I've been towards the top end already in an F three race, so I should be able to do it again. But yeah. Next question is from uh, Discord user Anderson Santos. Uh, Marta, this is for you. Um, if you could pick one driver that is currently not in W Series uh, in the grid this year, if you could pick one to be joining for 2023, who would it be and why? Good question. Oh, no. <laughs> um, gosha, gosha. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I was going to say Gosha because uh, she's like one of my best friends. No, I will have her in there. No, I think, um, I don't know, like, to be fair, like being realistic um, right now, um, I cannot think of any girl that could be in W Series apart from like um, Sofia, Tatiana, like these kind of girls. But they obviously are like in a different um, position, like they are doing different championships. And um, and I think like mm, yeah, probably in in um, next year the girls that are like last, let's say, maybe they they should give the opportunity to other new girls to say it like that. But I don't, I cannot really tell you which girls because I don't really know many like young young girls that are like in karting that could make it to W Series now or anything like that. Um, I just know the ones that are racing like Sophia and Tatiana, as I said. Um, so yeah, I cannot really tell you who. I just can, said Yosha. Can I ask it a different way then? And this might put you under a bit of a tricky position. Aside from Gosha, who that's not racing W Series this year, but has previously raced in W Series, would you bring back who's not Gosha Redest? Who I would bring back? Can I see the... To, to I can't remember about all the <laughs> Um Can we know the... the 2019. Yeah, I'll bring it up. Let me have a quick check and I'll try and go through the ones who aren't there. I know we had Tasmin Pepper, for example, Sabre Kirk, Caitlin Wood, Esme Hawkey, Naomi, Naomi Schiff, Vivian Kislecki, uh, Shay Holbrook, Megan Jilks, Sarah Bovey as well, who's doing so well these days. Yeah, yeah. I think I will bring back uh, probably, um, I think Tasmin maybe because... Um, she was not able to race in 2021, mm. I think, for whatever. And then I think she kind of like lost the opportunity because obviously she was going to race, but then she couldn't race. Um, so, yeah, I think Tasman is some, someone that I will put in the championship because I think she was okay. She was a, an okay driver. Like, she could have done well. Um, and I think um, it would also be more competitive if she was here than maybe some of the other girls, you know? So, yeah, I would say Tasman probably. I think that's a really good answer. I was uh, messaging Tasmin actually before all the stuff happened, which cancelled the season. And she had such an interesting career doing Volkswagen Polo. So I totally echo that. That's a really good shout. Um, there's another question here. And you bro briefly brought it up earlier, uh, Marta, but this is for both of you. And it's from Quico, uh, Quico JSM on Twitter. Both have been training and doing sim work in the Campos Academy. How is the experience? Ollie, do you want to tackle that? You've obviously excelled at Campos since you uh, started getting involved. Yeah. Um, so I've been to the Campos workshop quite a few times now, even when I was in F4. Um, like a couple of years ago, I still went to the Campos Academy. So I, I knew the guys already um, when I joined the team the F3 team. I already knew some of the some of the guys. Yeah, and they're they're a great great group. Um, yeah, and the Campus Academy, the the training and sim is really beneficial in my opinion. Uh, the trainer, Miga, um, he's he's really good in my opinion. And then they have two simulators where where I mean, like any other simulators, you you improve. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're a great group of guys. Marta, do you echo those positive statements? Yeah, yeah, completely. I know me, me. 
I was actually talking to him before to the trainer um because I have to go um yeah I think like they are in terms of like training stuff uh, I haven't really been doing a lot with them like in terms of driving um but in terms of like training um getting prepared for the races I think they do quite well um they have a good gym where you can do like um, all of all tra- all of the trainings that you want you can do cardio you can do like circuits and everything and um and I know me me get the trainer has like a lot of experience with drivers I think he's got like seven eight years with campus already so he already knows how to work with the with the drivers and yeah as also Oliver said like we they they've got two simulators so it's good as well and obviously when I when I'm when I'm gonna get ready for Singapore, I'm gonna I'm I'm going there. I'm going to to campus to the same, and um, and then also to train with with Mia. I love this stuff. This is a behind the scenes stuff you don't usually get to to hear about with when you watch just on the on the television. Um, Tyler, you're smiling, and I know why you're smiling because the next question is well, you you ask the next question, people can figure out what it's about. Well, I don't want to take too long on this one because of the fact that. This always seems to be a reoccurring thing. And I apologise to Oli and Marta on behalf of Franco Colapinto, who sent this in, who is a friend of ours and has had a very, very strong season as a rookie. But unfortunately, when he came on the podcast earlier this season, for some reason, all of the questions directed to him were about food. And that's carried on. Every time now I'm on the podcast, there's always a question or two about food. So question to Oli from Franco. Marta, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this as well. But what is your favourite pre-race meal to have, superstitious or not? What 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 do you have? Yeah, um, yeah, I've got a I've got a superstition. <laughs> it is it's supposed to be a secret, but <laughs> spread yeah, it on. No, um, <laughs> it started in F four uh, <laughs> with empty. Would basically always make ham and cheese sandwiches uh, <laughs> all the time just before uh before racing and stuff so and every time it seemed like every time i had the ham and cheese toasty uh i'll do a good race and when i didn't have it it would go something would go wrong so yeah i have a bit of a superstition there nice a lot, forget, a lot of for, you know but just forget about you know doing well in campus you just had a ham and cheese sandwich it's like popeye with spinach and off you go um Marta, as Tyler said, we'd like to hear from you on this one as well. Um, well, to me, to be fair, I don't have any superstitions with uh, with food. Um, you should try. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I try. <laughs> maybe next time I, I will eat pasta, and then if I'm good, I always eat pasta. Um, but no, to be fair, I always eat like some sort of carbohydrates, like pasta and stuff. And some protein, and that's it. Like, I don't really, I'm not, like, really, oof, like, crazy with the food. But I will try, I will try to to have something before Singapore, and if it works, then I try, will. Try, try the ham and cheese, you'll see. It's, ham and it's, cheese, it's, I like ham and cheese. At least three tenths, <laughs> at least three tenths. <laughs> at least three tenths. Three tenths, I hope. <laughs> Marta, I have to disagree. I think you should have, I don't know what it would have been, but, like, a Wiener schnitzel or something, because you got that race win in Germany, you got the podium in Germany. Yeah. So yeah. whatever you're eating in Germany clearly works. I love Germany. <laughs> um, yeah, I have. I, that's true. That's true. I I always thought about it. Like my first uh, podium in WCS was in Hockenheim. My win in WCS was in Norris Ring. Always Germany. So yeah, maybe I have to try and eat some schnitzel before I go into. <laughs> Problem solved. That's worth four tenths. That's how that works. I, I'm definitely gonna have that in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> So good food in Austria and Germany. I get yeah. that. Um, this question is from, L- oh God, did I pronounce it? Le Parmes, uh at Pork Anna Boy on Twitter. What an interesting name. This is for you, Ollie. <laughs> what did you learn from your difficult year last year in Freca and how did you manage to bounce back so well? I have noticed you've done a bit better this year. Yeah, a bit better. Um <laughs> No, yeah, it was a really tricky year. Um, the level in Freca is really high and it's so tight that every every little every little bit matters. A tiny mistake can cost so many positions. And last year it just seemed like 
I was missing that tiny bit every time. Uh, always kind of in between, just just outside of the points, which was a bit frustrating. Um, and yeah, but for me, just like I've just improved as a driver. You know, it's we're still young drivers, so we still we still improve massively uh, year each year. So yeah, for me. Yeah, I just didn't have the the grades this year. It happens, but I've improved since then. And yeah. This is from Orgit07 on Discord. Did you learn a lot from your F3 races? You spoke about how racing in Euroformula Open made it tough for you to judge a level. How has F3 helped with that? Yeah, um, obviously I've learned a massive amount. Uh, just just experience driving the car, uh, just getting more mileage in. Uh, you you just gradually improve and get more comfortable driving the car. Also, the fact that there was so many different weather conditions when I was driving. So I've in only two rounds I've driven when it's completely dry, when it's mixed conditions, wet conditions boxing for slicks mid-race like kind of all the possible scenarios so in that sense if if stuff like that happens next year i definitely now have experience um and yeah that helps a lot makes sense now just to round this out this question's via the podcast a few episodes ago for for you marta and it's asked by alice powell and, well, let's just cut to Alice right now. How many times has she forgotten her car park or her lanyard pass to get into the track this time this year? Or her car key? Or her car helmet? How, how many items has she lost this year? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, actually, um, I, I didn't lose my helmet. What? The <laughs> I think she means because of Miami. No, but you know what? What happened in Miami? It's actually true. I'm, so I tell you first the story about Miami and then I tell you what happened with the pass and everything. So Miami, um, I, 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 my helmet was arriving for Thursday or Friday, you know? So it got there, but then when I'm going to try it, it's not my size, you know? And then I didn't work. So I had to, 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 to like, um, ask some F1 drivers or like people to to please give me a helmet so I think this is what they mean with helmet um and also um I'm the kind of person that is a bit disaster sometimes <laughs> so I really now like my past I have to leave it in the box of the in the box in the back of the helmet in the helmet bag because otherwise I always leave my past but I mean, it's just like a pass, you know. It's not like it's quite easy to 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 lose it or like leave it somewhere. Um, and the car keys, I don't know what I mean to be fair, because uh, there's nothing. But they're they're just gonna make it uh, funny. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm quite. I need to organize my life more. To be fair, <laughs> in every sense, I'm I'm the kind of person that forgets about everything. I'm sure Oliver also doesn't get his pass. Yeah, yeah, no, actually. In Imola, I forgot my pass. So, yeah. <laughs> you, you could have not admitted and we'll never yeah. know. <laughs> no, but it's it's quite bad for me too. Like, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I also forgot my gloves in the workshop of Campos for, for Spa. <laughs> oh, so, well. Sh- shout out to, to David Fidalis for, for lending me a pair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the exact same. I'm quite forgetful. <laughs> well... Thank you, Alice Powell, for that amazing question with the amazing answer that comes out of it. But I'm afraid that is all the time we have this week. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you'd like to have your question asked on a future episode, use a hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter. Drop any questions below if you're watching on YouTube or let us know what questions you have on your mind on our Discord. Look for the podcast questions channel. If you are watching on YouTube, dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel all really helps us out. (laughs) Thank you, Ollie, for the benefit of anybody who is (laughs) listening rather than watching. He's pointing down. Press that button. He wants to be a YouTuber. He knows how it is. Like and subscribe. Any direction. Just hit the subscribe button.
review us, do all the nice things. You know what to do. Follow uh, us. Follow us, exactly. Thank you so much. And finally, check out f1feederseries.com for more feeder series insight, including the work from Tyler, and follow F1 Feeder Series 1, F1 FS Americas, and F1 FS Live on Twitter. You can find the links to all of those, plus the Twitter accounts for myself and everyone else on the podcast in the YouTube description or the podcast show notes. Until next time, we have been the F1 Feeder Series podcast. Goodbye. If you're watching on YouTube or let us know what questions you have on your mind. Well, this is why I do scripting and it gets really bad. I'm <laughs> just winging it. Or let us know what questions you have on your mind on Discord. Look for the postcard. Can we get Marta to do it? Because I, I think that I think that she, she's going to be much, much more. Can Marta, I do it? Marta, do you want to can have I a new it? job? You can you can take the job and be the podcast host, so I don't have to anymore.